everyone, I'm Whitney, and thanks for joining us for Covenant Church Online. Today, we have an amazing service designed just for you. First, I want to share with you a few ways to get connected here at Covenant. During this time of social distancing, we want to get connected and get to know you. In the chat is a Next Steps link that you can click on to complete and get more information about us. Or you can text Next Steps to 41411 and fill out our digital Next Steps card. And one of our amazing Dream Team members will follow up with you this week. We have something amazing for your children. Covenant Kids has created a special online experience for you and your kids to dance, sing, and learn the truth about who God is. Click on the link in the chat or go to youtube.com slash Covenant Kids to worship together as a family. We're so excited that you are joining us today for Covenant Church Online. This service is meant to encourage you and draw you closer to God in your daily life. We believe that God has something unique to say to you, and we hope you feel Him closer than ever before. Now get ready. Worship is starting in 30 seconds. Covenant Church, welcome to Church Online. We hope that you join in with us and sing your heart out. We are your children, joining as one, drawn by your presence, changed by your love. The power of your spirit living in us. We want to make your praise glorious.
right into your loving arms Lean in so long And oh, I'd love Full of mercy and tenderness You reach down and you lift me up Oh, I'd love Love is a banner over me how great is your love, how great is your love High as the heavens, deep as the sea How great is your love, how great is your love Your love, 
You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Come on, let's declare this today. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. No, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Oh, yes, I am. my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins oh yes cause I'm no
slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Come on, do you believe that today? Coming to church online, I, I just want you to know that there's two things we want to do for you today. We want to pray for you. If there's something in your life that's going on right now in this moment, come on, put it, put it in the chat. We just believe right now that God can do miracles right where you're at, right over a, a digital platform, that God, his presence could meet you wherever you are right now. The second thing we want to do today is encourage you. First Samuel chapter 22 what we see are David is on the run from Saul. He's in this place in his life where he is found himself in a cave. He's a fugitive, so to speak. And scripture tells us that 400 men joined him. And the Bible tells us that they were in distress, discontent, and in debt. So here we are, we got 400 people in this cave that are in distress, not happy with their life, and in debt. And then Psalms 34 is the recording of what David said in that cave. And here is what he said. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on, why don't you just have a moment right now in your home? Come on, let's sing. Come on, right now, I just believe that God wants to show up in your home. God, would you meet us where we are? God, would you show us that we're no longer slaves? Would you be the God of the Bible in our lives? Covenant, I wanted to take a minute and give you an update to let you know how your faithfulness is making an impact in our nation. In partnership with the Center for National Renewal, we served 500 meals across the United States, Seattle, Miami, California, Washington, D.C., and here in Dallas, where we serve nurses and doctors at UT Southwestern. We want to let you know that you are truly making an impact in our great nation in the midst of this pandemic. These are the people serving on the front lines of healthcare, and we wanted to take a moment to provide them with a meal and prayer to show our appreciation. We want to thank you for allowing us to make an impact today in the lives of those who are serving our community because when you give, you go. Thank you so much, God bless. Isn't that awesome? I just wanna say welcome to Covenant Church Online. I am so glad that you are tuning in today. Uh, before I dive into today's message, I just have to say thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving and your generosity. You have responded greatly to the needs of the community and we just so appreciate your faithfulness and your generosity uh, during a pandemic. Over the past few weeks, we've been in a series called Deja Vu, Breaking the Cycle. 
It's been a series where we want every listener and every viewer to know that if you've been looking for a change, looking for a new direction, looking to do something new, that day is possible through a life in Jesus Christ. Breaking a cycle, breaking an addiction can be very, very tough. And what shelter in place quarantine does for any addiction or cycle is, well, it amplifies it. We can all fall prey to finding comfort in things that aren't good for us. I loved week one with Pastor G. Uh, we heard an awesome message and he talked about the first step in breaking uh, a cycle is awareness. He said this in his message, he says, what we consistently do shapes who we eventually become. Maybe you woke up today and you, you found yourself in a place asking yourself, how in the world did I get here? Over time, you did something and all of a sudden you became something. In week two, we heard an incredible message from Pastor Craig, and he talked about uh, you have to have uh, a a vision for your life and how you can get that vision from God or you can get that vision from other people. So here's how it goes. Step one is this. Uh, You have to first admit that I have a problem. Step two in breaking a cycle is, is knowing, hey, not only do I have a problem, but number two is I have a place to go. And then uh, week three, what I want to talk to you about today is not just I have a problem, not just I have a place to go. It's I have a plan to get there because here's what I know. A vision without a plan is just a hope. I want to begin in uh, the book of John chapter five today. It says this. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. 38 years along the edges of this pool are people who aren't well, can't see, can't walk. Some have been permanently immobilized head to toe. And the Bethesda rules of the pool are simple. First come, first serve. It's a healing lottery. Everyone's got a ticket hoping their number will get called. Perhaps there were some who got in the pool But simply because they weren't first, they simply got wet, but didn't get healed. The Bible doesn't tell us how long or how often uh, uh, God would orchestrate this pool party. But what the Bible is crystal clear about is how long this unnamed man has been dealing with his infirmity. How long this man has come to live with the Bible's description of invalid, not mattering to society. And we're not talking about not mattering to society for just a little bit. We're talking about 38 years, 38 years of being a nobody, 38 years of no purpose, 38 years of doing the same thing over and over, 38 years of not having significance stuck in a cycle. This is a man who's on the side of the pool, who's just going in circles, stuck in the same cycle on the side of a pool. The only way that he believes that he'll see his life change is to be the first one in the pool. But then comes Jesus. Verse six tells us this. It says, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked, do you want to get well? I mean, Jesus' question to this man seems like the answer should be obvious. Like, why wouldn't this man be made well? (laughs) Historians note that Eastern beggars could actually make a living in the streets just asking for money. Uh, In fact, uh, I I heard from an economist that uh, was reading an article, but that some homeless men in Denver make $1,500 a day. 
Uh, I'll never forget uh, when Pastor Stephen uh, took a bunch of young adults of us over to, to Israel. And uh, we got to this spot, you know, where a bunch of tourists are at. And uh, some people wanted to ride camels. Y'all know I'm not riding no camel. But some people were riding camels. They were doing their thing, and that's cool. And uh, we saw an Eastern beggar on the side of the road asking for money. I'll never forget it. He had a blue translucent cup. And he had some 20s, some 10s, some 5s, some 1s in there. And it was about halfway full. I said, man, let me get his brother a couple bucks. You know, I said, he's on the side of the road, and I'm trying to be like Jesus, and I'm in Jerusalem. How awesome is this? Okay, so, so we do the deal. We give it to him. And then uh, we start walking where the, uh, the, the pathway, where the triumphal entry was, where people lay down branches. We talk about this stuff on, on Palm Sunday. And we're, we're walking down th this pathway, and, and somebody started singing Hosanna. I'm just kidding. So we started walking down this pathway, and I look on the side, and there's the same Eastern beggar. And he's got the same blue translucent cup, except now... The cup is empty. Listen, somebody said, oh, look, there's the beggar. I said, nah, that's a hustler, okay? Where I come from, we call that a hustle. Nevertheless, Jesus is inquiring about what this man really wants. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two things we need to change to change our habits. And here it is. Number one, a desire to change. If this man gets well, <laughs> he might have to get a job. I mean, it's a really great question when you think about it. Do you want to get well? Do you really want to get well? The habits we have to ask ourselves, if we really want to change, that often get us in trouble are comfort habits. I mean, if we gave up alcohol, we might actually have to face our pain, whatever we go to to escape what we don't want to deal with is what God wants to replace to help you actually move on with your life. We've got some, some work habits. I mean, we say we want a raise and a promotion, but do we really want the responsibility that comes with leadership? We've got some spending habits. P. Diddy, I think he had it right. More money, more problems. Are you sure you want more money? The enemy uses this area so much to keep so many people depressed. They have a cycle of making bad money decisions and it seems like their debt just increases over and over. My friend, do you really want to get? Well, we got some eating habits, especially now. We want to be able to eat whatever we want and look however we want at the same time. And then the one that I, I think destroys us so much are <laughs> relationship habits. Oh, we'll date the same person in a different body year after year. I've actually had Christian men and women admit to me that they're actually attracted to bad people. Like, yeah, I kind of kind of want a bad chick. I mean, right now, you can go on Instagram, you can go on TikTok, and everybody talking about something, I'm a savage. You know, like, like you a savage, classy, bougie, ratchet, sassy, moody, nasty, acting stupid. What's happening? I mean, sure, it's, you might say, man, it, it's a fun song to sing, but at some point, we got to ask ourselves, who wants to be with somebody that's nasty, <laughs> that's moody, but think about, the song, think about the words that are coming out of our mouth and what we're celebrating in culture, and then we are shocked when we get savage results. I mean, dude, I know dudes, they, they get dressed to usher, talking about some, I need a bad girl, you know what I'm saying? And then like this, I want to be with a, a bad boy and, until they cheat on you. And then you're like, I can't believe they would do this. And everybody else around you is going, we can believe it. You knew he was bad, right? One of my homies, this girl, he was like, man, I got a bad chick. And then she robbed him in the middle of the night and stole his jewelry. And he's like, I can't believe. I'm like, you can't? Uh, at some point, we got to ask ourselves, do we really want to get well? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I want to tell you today. If... If you don't want to get well, 
then keep doing exactly what you've been doing and you will get the exact same results you've been getting. But if you want the rest of your life to be different, then you may just have to take a step of faith. One of the questions that we have to ask ourselves about people that have changed, people that have, have been able to change their habits, people that have been able to change their life, what are some of the practical things that they've been able to do? Here's what I know. Extraordinary people do consistently what ordinary people do occasionally. I mean, think about anybody you know that is great at what they do. People that are exceptional, people that are excellent, they do something consistent that most of us do sometimes. I mean, we can substitute the word people for spouses, extraordinary spouses do consistently, what ordinary spouses do occasionally. I mean, the, the husbands that are, are romantic, that are constantly still dating their wife, they're, they're doing this consistently, not just for an anniversary. We can do the same thing about bosses and managers. Extraordinary leaders do consistently what ordinary leaders do occasionally. Healthy people eat consistently what unhealthy people eat occasionally. The difference between the extraordinary and the ordinary is found in their habits. Uh, the owner of Nebraska Furniture Mart, he calls every single employee in the company on their birthday. He does consistently what most owners do occasionally. I've got this friend in real estate uh, who is a mortgage broker. Every time I call them, uh, their voicemail uh, is new every single day. So if it's Thursday, it's, hey, happy Thursday. We're glad you're here. Hey, how can I help you? And I'm just going, you change your voicemail every single day. And, and, and again, if you saw how well they're doing in, in their bracket of, of, of their industry, it's going, we see that you're doing something consistently that some people do occasionally. She wants to have a personal touch with every single client that she has. I love what scripture tells us next. It says this, it says, his response to Jesus was, sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, Someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. This unnamed man believes that he could change if just he had someone in his life to help him in the pool. Not knowing that he's on the side of the pool talking to a pool. What's funny about this story is that scholars believe that there was no angel that stirred the waters. They believe it was intermittent springs outside the walls that caused the stirring. But superstition grew amongst the people that this water could do for them what only God can. This man is only returning back to this pool because everybody else is returning back to this pool. The second thing we need to change our habits it's godly community. Who you spend the most time with will influence your habits the most. I have friends in college who would literally say, hey man, let's go out tonight, let's get stupid. I'm like, just think about some of the things that come out of our mouth. Like, why wouldn't I wanna go out and get smart? <laughs> why wouldn't I wanna go make some good decisions? But we are often products of the people we spend the most time with. An NBA player was recently interviewed uh, the other day about the impact of NBA player salaries due to the coronavirus. And he said he'd estimate that one third of NBA players today are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, uh, my brother's in finance, he's a financial advisor, so he did the math of what a lower tier guy in the NBA would make, and uh, he discovered that about after taxes and all that, he all up in their business, and he told me, so it is what it is. Okay, so he said it would be about $83,000 a month after taxes, $83,000 a month. And he asked me a question, he said, Ryan, do you think you could spend $83,000 in a month? I said, I can figure it out. He's like, no, but for real, like, could you do it again in the next month, in the next month, in the next month? Like, just, just think about what they could be spending. And so you just think about someone who's living paycheck to paycheck, spending 
$83,000 of $83,000 versus someone who might have an average salary of maybe $50,000 and they're only spending $45,000. Let's say uh, someone's making that a month and let's say somebody's making that a year. Who's actually richer? Who looks richer? What's the difference between the two? Habits and companions. Habits and companions. It's, it's not about how much you make. It's what you do with what you have already. Uh, Junior Bridgman, um, he was a player in the 1970s and 80s, played in the league for about 12 years, and had a decent career, uh, eventually had his jersey retired by the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, in 1985, Junior Bridgman's peak salary was $350,000. Now, $350,000 is a lot of money, but that's not a lot of NBA money, obviously, compared to, to where things are at today. But Bridgman started taking care of his post-career stuff during the offseason. So during the summers, he began studying the business model of Wendy's. In fact, he started working at Wendy's in the summertime to learn more about the company. Can you imagine walking into Wendy's? You see somebody at 6, 8, flipping burgers, and you're like, hey, aren't you in the end? BA, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm working on my future. But, like, but you're already in the NBA. He's like, yeah, the NBA only going to last so long. So during his active career, uh, Junior actually opened up three Wendy's restaurants. And after his NBA retirement, he went all in. Ended up holding ownership of over 160 Wendy's. And then he ended up buying an additional 120 Chili's restaurants. And today, his net worth is estimated to be around $600 million. He might be worth more than LeBron James right now, all because of his habits. Some of us believe our money problems would disappear if we had more money, but our spending habits will move at the same rate of our increase. So if you make $50,000 right now and you're spending all of $50,000 right now, your habits are going to go with you. So if you start making $100,000, you say, oh, I want a million dollars, you're going to, the habits will follow you. How you manage what you have right now will often determine what you will have later. I found that it's easy to make good relationship decisions when you are surrounded by others who have done the same. I found that it's easier to eat healthier when your friends are eating healthier. It's easier to work out and take care of your body when your friends are doing the same thing. This is why we're always encouraging people to join a small group and find freedom. It is one of the pillars of the vision of this church. Our hope and our prayer for every single person watching this message is that you would find freedom in your life. There's a bunch of Zoom small groups happening right now that you can join online. But this is what I know about you and this is what I know about me. What is pivotal for us to break the cycle is accountability. Let me ask you this question. Who in your life is helping you find freedom? Who, who are you giving permission in your life to help you break a cycle? Do you have a friend who gets to approve who you go on a first date with? If you've got a spending habit, do you have someone that knows what's really going on with you? I mean, did you know that you can actually start monitoring where your spending goes at, at a website like mint.com? It's an online budget, and you can actually share your budget with someone that you trust to say, hey, would you help me stay in line? Would you kind of be a guardrail for me to make sure that I don't go off the side of the road as it pertains to my finances? I've got a friend who's a, a nutritionist, and he came over to the house, and we, we were talking, and, and we were talking about, you know, what healthy food to eat. He's you know, it just made me feel guilty the whole time. My water's not good enough. It needs to be alkaline. I had a naked drink in there. You know, like the nice little green smoothies, like too much sugar. I'm like, I'm trying to be healthy. You know, I'm just going to McDonald's because you're getting on my nerves, that type of stuff. And so, but he started breaking down uh, what it takes to really change your eating habits, what it really takes to be healthy. And he said, hey, Ryan, here's a rule of thumb. If it's in your house, it's too late to say no to it. If it's in your house, 
it's, it's too late to say no to it. And so he did us a favor. He went through our pantries and removed about three-fourths of our pantry. Okay, I said, man, where all our food go? He goes, I told you, I got to get it out your house. If you've got an issue with alcohol, not having it in your house might be a great next step. If bars is your problem, well, not right now, but we're, we're one new cycle from that being a different story. But you might need to have some accountability, like Find My Friends or Life360. These are apps that can allow you someone to see your location. I have 20 people that know where I'm at right now. If I were to ever find myself in a location I shouldn't be in, I've got several people that would call me and have called me when they see something out of the ordinary. If you've got a pornography issue, have you heard of Covenant Eyes? It's not a Covenant Church product, but it is a great product. It's a great resource you can use where you can select friends that get a report of your internet search history. Uh, VidAngel is a streaming service that will actually filter out nudity and swearing from shows. You might say, Ryan, this is really extreme. You're right. Do you want to get well? It's extreme because I've seen so many bad habits destroy people's lives and the lives of the people they love. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we've got to be people that can admit when we have a problem. <laughs> We're experts at seeing everybody else's. We can see everyone else's money habits so crystal clear. G talked about this week one. It's so easy to see the speck in somebody else's eye, but it's so hard to see it in the mirror. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to be people that have a vision of a better place to go. I want to invite the worship team to come back out as we get ready to close this message. Number three, people, we, we, we've got to be people that develop a plan to get there. And I believe a massive part of that plan is, is, is having accountability. I just believe that practically and spiritually right now, cycles are being broken in people's lives right now. I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit, people are being set free right now. That is what can happen in the presence of the Lord. You might have a whole family history of people that could never break cycles. My dad never, my mom always, I never went to college. Nobody in my family has ever that's really good news, my friend, because I believe God just might want you to be the first. And I can't wait to see what God does through your life. What I believe is that we've got to be people that get over the shame of what we've done. I, I think there are often times where we have so much pride in, in this image that we've sort of built up for ourselves that we, we don't want anyone to think negatively of us. Uh, I can't tell you how many people just aren't willing to phone a friend in a moment of crisis to say, hey, would you, would you pray for me? You know, the book of James says that we should confess our sins to one another so that we can be healed. So that we can be healed. You understand, ladies and gentlemen, confession to God gets you forgiveness. Confession to others makes you whole. I can't tell you how many people missed out on wholeness that was one phone call away because of pride. Man, I, I messed up again, and now I've got this shame thing on me. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know today, it's not shame on you. It's shame off you. Is there anybody in your life right now that you can start calling and say, you know what? I need you to pray for me. I need you to be in my corner. I, I, there's something about telling somebody what's going on with you that brings healing to our soul. Some of us just, oh, I'm just going to go to God and God alone. That's where you start. 
But he's going, hey, I've, I've actually surrounded you with some people so that you can actually be whole. That's my hope. That's my prayer for every single person watching this message. So they wouldn't find themselves going in circles, that they wouldn't find themselves stuck in a cycle, that they would find themselves actually getting closer to the Lord. So some of us believe because of the things that we've done, because of the decisions that we've made, that we just, that God is somehow distant from us. God has gone nowhere. In fact, God invites us to draw near to him. And that's what I want us to do right now. The band's getting ready to sing a a song we sang a little bit earlier. And that's what I want to happen for you in your home right now. You and your family, I want you to begin to draw near to God. No matter what you've done, there is nothing that the love of the Father Father God can forgive you for. Come on right now, let's just worship together. As I draw near to you, you draw near to me, and there's no space between us. I turn my heart to you, and you run to me. Oh, how I Lord, I pray for every single person right now that's stuck in a cycle. God, I pray that you would break the cycle in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would be in every home and every car, reaching every single device under the sound of my voice right now. God, I pray that we would be willing to admit that we have a problem. God, I pray that we would see the vision that you have for our life. And God, I pray that we would invite others in to our journey with you. God, I pray that you would break generational curses right now. God, I pray that right now you would be giving people a brand new vision for their life, brand new vision for their relationships, brand new vision for their, for their finances. God, would you begin to do a work to break habits and break cycles in the name of Jesus. Right now, I wanna give each and every person that's watching online an opportunity to surrender their life to Christ. Maybe for you, this is the first time that you heard a message like this. Maybe this is the first time. This is maybe even your first church experience. Welcome to coming to church online. I just wanna encourage you right now that this is the moment. This is the best time in your life, the best season of your life to surrender your life to Christ, to say, I wanna do things your way. I I, I don't wanna have my way anymore. I wanna do things your way. I want my relationships to be your way. I want to spend my money your way. I want to live my life your way. I want to treat people your way. If today you know you need to make a change, if today you want to give your life to Christ, I want to lead you in a prayer. There's a little button there if you're watching on your computer that you can click that says, hey, I want to raise my hand. I want to, I want to give my life to Christ. Wherever you're watching from, if that's you, I want to pray with you. Maybe you want to rededicate your life to Christ today. Would you repeat after me? Say, Jesus, Thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my future, my relationships, and my life to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, 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 amen. Listen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was the greatest decision you've ever made in your life. And right now, just because you clicked on that button, we're going to send you a link to, uh, it's just a digital download of, of what we call a, a, our next steps book. It's starting point. It just shows you what to do now that you've made this incredible decision. Come on, we are so grateful for, for what you, the decision that you've made today. We are so excited for you. Heaven is going crazy right now. And I'm just so grateful that you have been able to join us today on Covenant Church Online. Uh, Mother's Day is, is next weekend. We got something special for you and we're looking forward to it. Can I bless you before we go? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you peace and cover you with his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Have an awesome day. Wasn't that message exactly what we needed today? A word filled with hope and encouragement. I want to share with you a few ways to get connected here at Covenant. Even during this time of social distancing, we have something just for you and we want to get to know you. In the chat is a Next Steps link that you can click on to complete and get more information about us. Or you can text Next Steps to 41411 and fill out our digital Next Steps card. And one of our amazing Dream Team members will follow up with you this week. There's no better time than right now to use the gifts God's given you to help reach out to others. Growth Track is the perfect place to find where you belong here at Covenant. Small groups, serving opportunities, and outreach are just the beginning. Join us today for a Growth Track via Zoom at 2 p.m. We have something amazing for your children. Covenant Kids has created a special online experience for you and your kids to dance, sing, and learn the truth about who God is. Click on the link in the chat or go to youtube.com slash Covenant Kids to worship together as a family. Are your teens missing their friends and looking for a social connection? Legendary Youth is meeting together every week virtually. Click the link in the chat or go to the Cove Live app to sign your teen up for one of our legendary small groups. In just a moment, we will be preparing to worship God with our giving. To give, you can do so on the Cove Live app, covenantchurch.org slash give, or click the give button on your screen. During this unprecedented time, our lives are changing daily, if not hourly. To find out how you can donate to support a local family, click the link in the chat or go to covenantchurch.org slash relief for more information. We would love to chat with you in the comments. We have Dream Teamers waiting for you. Thank you again for joining us online today. We will see you next time for Covenant Church Online.